Hello and welcome to my presentation on generating and solving a perfect maze using algorithms. A maze is considered perfect or simply connected if there are no loops in the maze. These mazes can be represented using the data structure known as a tree. There are multiple ways to generate a perfect maze, and the way I did it is known as a randomized step first search. Once your maze is generated, there are also numerous ways you can solve it. I've implemented two different algorithms known as the wall follower algorithm and Chernow's algorithm. My project allows the user to choose which algorithm they want to solve the maze with, along with allowing the user to customize the size and speed at which the maze is generated and solved. A cool feature about my program is that it renders the maze in real time so you can visualize the generation and solving of the maze. You may be thinking, why are mazes important? Well, firstly, mazes are just fun. Besides that, mazes have other uses in professional fields. One notable use is in the world of psychology as mazes and other puzzles can be used to help with cognitive development. And in the math and computer science world, mazes are a great way to better understand concepts and graph theory. This is because most maze solving algorithms closely relate to graph theory. If you think about the maze as a tree, the start of the maze would be the root of the tree, like the green node in the tree on the right. And we are searching the tree for the destination cell, which is represented by the red node. Mazes also play a huge role in the world of machine learning and AI, as they can be used to help teach the AI. So let's talk a little bit more about the generation of the maze. How does it work? Like I mentioned before, we're using the randomized depth first search method. This implements the stack data structure. We can think of a, of a stack as a stack of books. Whenever you add a book to the stack, it goes on top of the previous book. Then when you remove the book, you must grab it from the top of the stack. The algorithm starts by picking an initial cell, marking it as visited, and adding it to the top of the stack. In our case, I chose the top left node as our starting cell. Now, while the stack is not empty, we remove a cell from the stack and set that as our current cell. If our current cell has any neighbors that have not been visited, we add the current cell back to the stack and randomly select one of its neighbors. We remove the wall between the two cells and mark the neighbor as visited before adding it to the stack. We continue this process until all cells have been visited. This method ensures that we have a perfect maze as all cells are accessible and there are no loops. On the left, you can see a visualization of the maze represented as a graph before and after generation. Now that we have our maze, let's think about how we can solve it. One method is known as the wall follower algorithm. The basic premise of this method is that as long as the maze is a perfect maze, you can keep one hand on the wall the entire time you are traversing the maze. Because you can access all areas of the maze, this is guaranteed to get you to the exit, although you will likely run into some dead ends along the way. On the right, you can see a visualization of how this works. In order to implement this using code, we have to know what direction we came from in order to know which way to go. We can determine this by comparing the x and y values of the current cell to the previous cell. From there, we go in the direction of the wall we are following relative to where we came from. If there is no neighbor in that direction, then we go straight, and if we cannot go straight, we go in the direction of the wall we are not following. If the current cell has no neighbors, that means we are in a dead end. We need to backtrack by marking the current cell as not a valid path and then setting the current cell to the previous cell. We continue backtracking until we reach a cell that has an unvisited neighbor. Once we reach the destination cell, we have solved the maze. The next algorithm I implemented is Tremel's algorithm. This algorithm, invented by Charles Pierre Tremel, is an efficient method to find the way out of a maze that requires drawing lines on the floor to mark a path. On the right, you can see a visualization of the process in a multiply connected maze. A path from an intersection is either unvisited, marked once, or marked twice. When an unmarked crossroads is reached, pick a random direction and mark the entrance to where you came from and the path you take. If you reach an intersection you have visited before, meaning it is marked once, choose the path with the fewest marks. If the path you came in on only has one mark, and you reach a dead end or a junction where all the paths have been marked once, turn around and return along that path, marking it again. Never enter a path with two marks, as this means that the path 
was determined to be a dead end. If the maze has loops, the turn around and return rule effectively transforms the maze into a simply connected one. Whenever we find a path that would close a loop, we treat it as a dead end and return. When you finally reach the destination, the paths marked exactly once will indicate a way back to the start. Now we get to watch a demo of my project. Here at the beginning, you can see me adjust the size and speed of the maze before starting the generation process. The lines of the maze start out gray and then turn white when it is completed. Now we are performing the right wall follow algorithm. The active path is signified by the yellow squares, the current cell is the cyan square, and the paths determined to be dead ends are marked with gray squares. Now we will do the left wall follower, which is visually represented the same way. Now we go into Chamorro's algorithm. In this one, the current cell is marked by the cyan square and a diagonal line is marked at the junctions. When the mark gets passed a second time, it becomes an X, signifying the dead end. When we reach the end, the correct path back to the beginning is highlighted in yellow. If you were paying very close attention to the highlighted paths for each algorithm, you may have noticed that they were all the same. This is because perfect mazes only have one solution. The Trammell algorithm was discovered in the 19th century and has been used about 100 years later as a depth first search. Because of this, all of the algorithms used in this project are variations of the depth first search. Both of the searching algorithms have no prior knowledge of the maze when they begin solving. Another very interesting fact is that Claude Shannon, known as the father of information theory, developed a mechanical mouse named Theseus in 1950. Theseus was able to find his way through a maze and would learn the maze. When placed back into an area he had been before, he would be able to correctly find his way to the end with no mistakes. This was the first development in machine learning and artificial intelligence. I had a lot of fun working on this project and I am really proud of it. In the future, I may come back to this project and add even more algorithms for solving and generating the mazes. Working on this project really helped me get a better understanding of how these algorithms work. I created this project as my final project for UK's Honors Algorithm Design and Analysis course. This class teaches you about algorithms and the data structures needed to implement them, among other related topics. Algorithms are fundamental to computer science and are used to solve real-world problems. If we thought of programming as a building, then the algorithm would be the structural supports that hold up the building. Without the supports, there would be no building. Every piece of technology you use on a daily basis has an algorithm behind it. Studying algorithms gives you an edge over others as the proper algorithm can improve the efficiency of your program, properly utilize your resources, and overall solve the problem better. Being a computer science student at the University of Kentucky gives you many opportunities, including the opportunity to work on many interesting projects such as this one. 
you will also have exclusive access to internship and other job opportunities. UK computer science students also have the opportunity to participate in interesting research projects with our CS faculty. Some topics include networking, systems, cybersecurity, game development and graphics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, computational biology, bioinformatics, and medical imaging. Keeping Current is a weekly department-hosted seminar featuring talks from students, professors, and guest speakers about current topics in computer science. These talks can be very interesting, and they are a great way to learn more about the field. Students here also have access to numerous student organizations, including the Association for Computing Machinery, also called ACM. ACM is the Society of Students Interested in Computer Science, and it is a great place to meet people with similar interests. Along with ACM, there is ACMW, which is a branch of ACM for women. This is a great organization for women in CS, as computer science tends to be a male-dominated field, and it is nice to have a group of women there to support each other. Other organizations include Tau Beta Pi, the Engineering Honors Fraternity, the Society of Women Engineers, the National Society of Black Engineers, the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, STEM Jaqueers, and many more. I hope that when it comes time for you to think about what you want to do for college, that you consider applying to the University of Kentucky and taking advantage of the opportunities you have in the Computer Science Department. Thank you so much for attending my presentation.